Welcome back, everybody, and we are so happy to keep these episodes coming to you during these coronavirus pandemic times when a lot of us are locked down and just waiting patiently for every new episode to come out. So Stu Jones here with Florida Powerboard Club as we bring you episode two with feature coverage of the Key West Poker Run 2019 edition. And that's 27 years in a row of this signature Florida Powerboard Club Poker Run event. And what we are showing you now is just a quick recap of where we left off on our last episode as we joined the Wednesday departure group, making their way out into the ocean waters and heading southbound towards Government Cut. So before we do that, let's thank our sponsors. These YouTube episodes are brought to you by Mercury Racing Wide Open and by OffLeaseOnly.com, the nation's used car destination. In addition to our 2020 series sponsors pictured here, we'd like to recognize all of these Key West 2019 feature sponsors as seen here on our official event masthead. This is the artwork for our official souvenir t-shirts, posters, and banners. These sponsoring partners play a vital role and it's through their support that Florida Powerboat Club can produce this signature Key West Poker Run event. And let's get started by welcoming Mark and Jennifer Shouten from Arizona, a long way from home, and showing off their brand new Bravo Zulu 42-foot MTI powered by Mercury Racing 450Rs. So this is the latest, greatest, a 2020 model with the brand new Mercury engines. And it's a big departure from their previous boat, which was a 43-foot MTI Cat. Uh, they joined us last year, 2018. So it's their second year in a row, but this time they wanted to have a little more space for all their friends, and I think this boat will work out just fine for them. So to Mark and Jennifer, congratulations on the new boat, and thank you so much for coming back again all the way from Arizona. And you've got to love these Nortex, and what an amazing job that they've done bringing these center consoles into poker runs. Rob and Kerry Turner all the way from Michigan, enjoying their 34 Nortec center console. And just watch this center console, this whole handle, these rough waters, and the boat gracefully breaks that water. And if you look inside the cockpit, you know, they could be holding a drink in their hand and it wouldn't have even spilled. It's a true testament to how nice this Nortec runs. And we're just hovering outside government cut now as we catch up with George Takula from Switzerland with his team, a Predator, it's a 447. The bottom powered by Mercury, racing 1350s. A little bit more slow motion as she just crushes these waves, uh, pointing the boat now into government cut. And I really do like this vantage point. The helicopter is hovering into the wind. And this is a section that can be very challenging as we watch Sebastian Follin and uh, John Wittenberger in the background in the Sonic. And here we are in Project 1080 as we negotiate that red marker and uh, turn into government cut. And here's Jeff and Sue Wanamaker from Maryland in their 34 regulator center console. They're actually delivering the boat to Key West because they have a home there, and this is going to be their Key West boat. And let's say hi again to Scott Witt and his 33-foot DCB. Big change for him going from a 38 formula to this cat. It's going to have to change his whole way of thinking behind the wheel. And one more time with Mark and Jennifer Shouten in their brand-new 42-foot MTI. Look at those quad 450Rs. And just a quick shot of Randy Kent's 37-foot Polini is going to take that down to Key West and show it off. And now making our way into Government Cut, and you can see why we're making this move through Government Cut. Look how much smoother the water is. And that's the idea, guys. You know, we are fair-weather boaters at the end of the day, so if it's a little bumpy in the ocean, what's nice about running down from Miami to the Keys is you can do the entire trip on the protected waters. So making our way here through the Port Miami, uh, there's a Maersk uh, container line ship on the right-hand side, and of course, downtown Miami skyline straight ahead. And we're gonna see the same boats for a little period here because, well, let's face it, the helicopter is just kind of chasing the same group of guys. And it's right about this point that uh, either Jerry in the front seat or Joe on the back seat should say to the pilot, well, okay, we got a lot of Jeff and Sue and their regulator, <laughs> so <laughs> can we go get some different boats now? So at this point, they have to make a decision and circle back and go way back out into the ocean and pick up some more boats coming in. Or they've got a beeline for Grove Harbor and pick up some of the boats over there. 
And switching over to our onboard camera, Project 1080, let's talk about the U.S. Coast Guard. We just went past uh, the U.S. Coast Guard terminal, and it reminded me of some of the pre-planning that we went into, and we created a segment just for you guys to show the amount of work that went into planning the safety management aspect of this event. So uh, let's take a moment to just flash back uh, to Port Miami, where we visited with the U.S. Coast Guard uh, just about a month earlier. We staged this meeting at the U.S. Coast Guard Station Miami, and I think it was long overdue because we've had these meetings before, but it's been about six years now since we started the safety management program. The purpose of the meeting was really to get all of these law enforcement agencies from federal, which is, of course, uh, Coast Guard, to state, which is Florida Fish and Wildlife, and, of course, local, which is county and city. Altogether, about five or six local agencies were represented uh, from city and county, uh, all with marine units. And of course, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. So not just police, but also the fire rescue staff. And the reason for the meeting was to get everybody up to speed on what the poker run is and how many boats are attending and what our mapped out course is. And really just to ask them to leave you guys alone because you guys know what you're doing. And they were very cool with all of that. And I explained to them the differences between the boats and how fast we're going and what the expectation levels were of us as far as having them out there. And they were really, really cooperative. I mean, look at the attendance alone of this meeting. And we even talked about the different uh, speed classes, the different yellow, red, and green stickers on the boats. It was very educational, I think, for a lot of them. I went through the safety guidelines that we put out to all of our team uh, members. I went through the course map and explained the course through Miami, Port Miami, and, and on to Rickenbacker. Uh, explained all the details of the course going through the Florida Keys. They asked a lot of questions, and I hope I gave them the answers they were looking for. But just a little background to all of you guys to show what we do as far as pre-planning for this big poker run. And now rejoining our Wednesday group as the boats head through Rickenbacker Causeway out into the open waters of Biscayne Bay. Going to be one more stop along the way as we check in at Grove Harbor Marina. Going to pick up some more boats there to get a poker card and continue on our way to Key Largo. And remember guys, uh, Rickenbacker Causeway is always an idle speed zone bridge. But in particular, while they're doing construction and have divers down, very, very slow speed. Just a quick rendezvous here with one of our safety boats. This is volunteer Joe Balistrieri in his 33-foot Everglades. Uh, he's got two Miami-Dade Fire Rescue staff members on board, and they are going to chase the group south to Key Largo and beyond. Well, guys, uh, if I may say so, we do have a very good production value going here, as you just saw an onboard camera. Uh, timed out perfectly, listening to those Mercury Racing 540s roar as I throttled up Project 1080, heading uh, now further south to Grove Harbor. And now we're gonna try to catch up with Jim and Lynn Archambault from Georgia in this 43-foot Outer Limits and they just reminded me that we need a new award, guys. It's going to be called the Best Rooster Tail Award. Uh, and this boat just indeed throws a beautiful rooster tail out the back. A lot of coverage of them in the previous episode. A lot of coverage in the Emerald Coast episode as well. For them, keeping it real, what does that mean? It means going boating with the Florida Powerboat Club as much as they possibly can. Right, Lynn? And it was just a short hop from Rickenbacker Causeway to what we now call the Seaplane Channel. Uh, indeed, that is what they call it. You don't see that. There's no signs that say that. But the reason it's called that is we're heading to what is the site of the old Pan Am Terminal. And it's a big part of Miami's heritage. And that particular site is now the site of Grove Harbor Marina. So just a little bit of nostalgia for you guys. But this certainly gives our helicopter crew a little bit of time to get in close and sometimes a little too comfortable, I think. <laughs> but they like to get the shot, so they're giving everybody a nice little dusting with their rotor blades and their prop wash, uh, as we say hi to Joe and Nicole in their big 50 skater. Uh, but a lot of beautiful boats. It seems like the skaters are all sticking together today. Uh, Joe from Michigan and Todd from Michigan, both with their big skaters. But we're only just a couple of hundred yards away from the dock now, and there's the money shot as we check out Grove Harbor Marina. And those are the buildings that actually were part of the Pan Am Terminal years ago. They've all been rebuilt, 
and you can't really see it, but there's a boat ramp just over to the left. That's how the airplanes came in and out of the water. So remember now, we're going to gain about another 20 more boats here because there's been a lot of teams staging here overnight. This is our second uh, official marina location that is a part of the event. And of course, Grove Harbor is one of our event sponsors. And you can see all these boats here. These have been staged overnight. These are going to be added to the mix now. So our 40 plus boats are now going to become about 66 poker run teams on today's run. Of course, I mentioned in the last episode, and I don't think I mentioned here yet, that it's 269 registered teams for this Key West Poker Run 2019 edition. So leaving on the Wednesday group, it's kind of been the best kept secret for a few years now. And I think most of the guys attending today would agree, like Chris and Angela Bradley, they like to do the Wednesday group also. And it's because when you only have about 60 boats going down on the run, that means more room at the fuel dock, uh, more room at the lunch stop, uh, easier to get around, just not so congested, and a lot more helicopter time and, well, in this case, drone time uh, as our drone flies over and captures all of these shots as the teams prepare. Now, just mind you, the timeline here is probably about 30 minutes prior to the North Group arriving. Uh, so what we're about to see now is just this beautiful uh, array of high-performance hardware just nicely and you know docile just sitting here quietly on the dock uh, waiting to get fired up nice mixture of performance center consoles obviously the twin outboard cats are making a big comeback and we just saw those four very colorful skaters all lined up together and i think that's what's really cool about these poker run events and the way that we structured our club that it's really kind of a run what you brung group now we've got a class for everybody and of course the mothership now the flagship of the cigarette fleet that by now most of us have seen Derek Wacob's 59 cigarette Tirana, uh, which is now powered by six Mercury Racing 450Rs. Uh, remember when it came out earlier in the year for the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, it came out with uh, six 400s, but of course the Mercury Racing 450 had not been released yet. Well, when we all went to Nashville for the unveiling of that new Mercury 450R, there she was, six carat, uh, all decked out with six new 450s, and I think that she's been a showstopper ever since. And I really think that our drone pilot is doing a great job of getting some nice beauty shots of these boats, especially now we're looking at the skaters a little more closely. John Azule uh, in his 44 skater, and he looks like they're rafting up alongside Chris Bradley. Now, of course, this was Chris Bradley's boat at one point, if I recall, and now Chris has the uh, white colored 388 with Goodwin 2000 horsepower engines. Bo and Tiffany Renfro, uh, big time skater fanatics have been enjoying this boat, Dirty Money now since they got it well, probably four years ago. And uh, Mercury Racing 700s, a great running boat. And she is stored and maintained at Brand X Marine in Pompano Beach, right near our shop. There's Jason Ventura uh, at the helm. And you gotta love that one on the right, that's five waves, it's a 118 foot AB motor yacht. Triple MTU 2400s, top speed at over 50 miles per hour. Three words, guys, that all I can think of. Welcome to Miami. Well, I'd like to take a minute now just to slow things down a little bit and have us all take a deep breath and think for a second about our, our good friend, Michael Pierce, who we lost in December of 2019, uh, just a month after the poker run. Uh, Michael had a tragic accident with his father and lost his life in early December. And a lot of us uh, made it to Baton Rouge to pay our respects to the family and to Nikki, who's riding on board there today. And gonna spend a little more time with James Branton now, also from Louisiana, another 388 skater called Team Voodoo. And uh, I always get confused by what boats come out of this family. I think we all do because his dad, David, has a very serious toy habit. And I think that that is uh, carrying on to son. And all I can say is I can't keep track of all the boats this family has. But I remember Voodoo was built with Goodwin engines, uh, 4,000 horsepower total. But it was a solid blue boat, and this boat is definitely not solid blue. It's got a lot of white in it. So I don't know if they came in and redid it or if they got another one. But between, you know, David and Leanne and their son James and even their daughters are a lot of boats in this Branton family. Well, we're back down on the docks now with the FPC girls. Looks like Kelly and Mallory on the left are going to be 
uh, making sure everybody gets their bags, get checked in, and get some breakfast here at Dockside. Thanks to Grove Harbor Marina, Alan Lima, for putting out a nice spread for breakfast. Uh, but meanwhile, it's time to start picking up poker cards. So the girls are going to shift their responsibilities from handing out goodie bags to handing out poker cards. And remember, this is a bonus card that the teams are going to pick up here. Now, this is a long course uh, for many people, close to 180 miles altogether. And it's difficult to be picking up poker cards at every single checkpoint. So we like to keep it simple and just hand out a bonus card. So that's what we've been doing. We gave out a bonus card at Hallover Marine Center earlier. And as we join now Barry and Stephanie Henson on their big, beautiful 50 skater, uh, they're picking up their bonus card. And what they're going to do is accumulate those bonus vouchers. And they aren't actual playing cards. They're a voucher that will be turned in for a card. And it gives them the extra playing cards to build their hand. When they visit the Saturday night party, they're gonna get five cards. And this way they're gonna get a sixth or a seventh card through those vouchers. Now, we don't get to play on Project 1080, but Ted Hosmer and his lady, well, they're a registered team. So we're gonna let them play and get their bonus vouchers and they're just as legit as everybody else. Oh, just love these drone shots, guys. It doesn't get much better than this. Look at Danielle, we're <laughs> right on top of you, Danielle. Um, as we look, it even has a target on the front of Tomcat. Looks like a landing pad for a drone. Just look at the magnificent paintwork on this skater, and he keeps it so clean and perfect. I think Todd keeps all of his stuff perfect. I saw a post on Instagram of his shop where he stores his boats, and it looked like an exotic car showroom. And a closer shot now of uh, Joe and Nicole Gilstore from Michigan. Their third year in a row now. I looked back and saw, wow, 17, 18, and now 19. Team 50 Shades, beautiful custom graphics, and look at how the team uniforms match perfectly. Guys, I owe you big time. I should have gave you best dressed team. And continuing with our skater factory segment, because that's what it's starting to look like. Uh, Don Doty and his lady Carol Ann in their 42 foot skater, powered by Mercury Racing 1350s. And followed by another member of the Don Doty family. It's Chip Miller and his lady, or his first mate today, Deb, uh, in the 40 skater. And referring to the member of Don's family, well, no, they're not brothers. This is Don Doty's second skater, and he allowed Chip to prepare the boat, which Chip worked hard at, he told me, and bring it here on the Key West run. Now let's say hi to Steve and Lisa Young from Alabama, and let's also congratulate them on their new statement. Uh, they're 38 Team Naughty Habit, uh, the first poker run with this new statement. They've owned a fountain for many years, but with all their friends, it was time to get a center console. Now it's time for a big cat. Well, this 48 MTI is about as good as it gets. Fred and Judy Revis from South Carolina and from Florida, Mercury Racing 1350s. And just a little later in the show, we're gonna pick up on his matching MTI 42 center console. And I just happened to notice how well Fred executed that card pickup. Not too windy today, so the boats are gonna have a pretty easy time pulling up alongside the dock and the guys with the little push poles won't be working too hard today. Well, from a center console to a, a big outboard cat and back to another center console now showing you the variety of this poker run event as we catch up with Roger and Pam Anderson from Texas in their Nortec 390 center console powered by triple Mercury Verados. And they are happily a two boat family now. They had a fountain, a 42 fountain in the club for several years. They decided to hang on to that boat uh, for boating back in Texas. And the Nortec 39 is the perfect platform for their Florida power boating lifestyle with the club from the Florida Panhandle to the Florida Keys and on to the Bahamas. And always great to see Bubba Crisco and his lovely lady Brittany on board and look at the entire crew they have a big crew on board today war party and all the ladies with their matching outfits and matching bikinis to boot but it's just a little early in the day now for the bikinis it's only about 10 30 in the morning uh, but i can promise you guys we're going to see all those bikinis out a little later in the show and here's another team of diehard poker runners you bet john wittenberger jr uh, his lady, Natalie, up front getting the card. And they have been doing poker runs for as long as I can remember. Growing up around the scene uh, with a lot of boats in the family over the years with John Wittenberger Sr. 
uh, who's running his Sonic today, but uh, definitely a hardcore team that loves coming on these events and always wears their life jackets. Big thumbs up to Team Bad Decision. Mallory and Kelly there on the dock with the Grove Harbor team uh, getting ready for the next team to come up. It looks like it's going to be Josh and Terry Ann Pierce from Kansas. It's their third year in a row for the Key West run and a very special mention. They've got Nick and Jeannie who are honeymooners on board with them on this trip. And it looks like uh, that is our new FPC girl Mallory on the left handing off the poker cards to the Janucci family as they pull up in their 39 foot Top Gun. About their fourth time now on Key West. And uh, what a great paint job I think they did. And of course Kelly, our second FPC girl, as we say goodbye to the Janucci's, uh, we'll catch them out with the helicopter soon. Yes, the girls are having a nice time here. Next uh, handoff is Rob and Carrie Turner from Michigan. They're 34-foot Nortec. Team Turner up. Their first time here on the Florida Powerboard Club's Key West Poker Run. And what a great boat to do it on. Nortec, of course, built a lot of these 34s. In fact, so many that they actually have their very own factory just for the 34 model in North Fort Myers. And it's time to welcome one of our sponsors. This is Jim Schultz from Team Factory Billet. And everybody would say, well, where's the outer limits? Well, the 51 outer limits isn't here because Jim has himself a brand new cigarette Huntress, 42 foot, uh, big stout, 12 foot beam, powered by five Mercury 400 Rs. And looks like he's one of the last teams to come up here and get the poker card. But it looks like Jim has stopped the boat and they're not doing the normal touch and go. It looks like they're actually trying to dock the boat here, uh, but I guess that's okay because they're one of the final cards. Now he's, he's hanging on to the pole. Okay, he's pulling on the pole. I guess they're trying to get, oh, they're trying to get the girls. They're trying to get the girls on the boat. They can't, they can't take the girls on the boat. The girls are doing poker cards. They can't, what? They're, the girls are getting on their boat. What the heck's going on here? Chino, you let that happen? I mean, look at all the guys at the dock at Grove Harbor are just letting this happen. They're taking our FPC girls right on to that cigarette. Oh my God. Well, that's okay. Jim's a good guy. He's a sponsor. He's entitled. Bye Mallory. Bye Kelly. See you in Key West. Well gang, uh, getting kicked off here. Key West Poker Run 2019 edition on a beautiful Wednesday. Uh, I got my buddy Ted Hosmer on the boat. He had a little meltdown with his Donzi, and I said, you know what, Ted, I could use some crew. So him and his lady, Mika, are joining us on Project 1080 today. Uh, we just witnessed a great start, a little bit bumpy as we headed out uh, here from all over Marine Center into the ocean. And even in the bay here, as we rock around, I'm gonna turn the boat around a little bit. Even as we rock around a little bit, uh, the pack has already left. We did a uh, bonus card here at Grove Harbor Marina. Uh, a great turnout today, about 80 boats running on this first uh, Wednesday. Tomorrow, we're gonna be about 180 boats as we depart from Miami and do it all over again. Uh, warm, sunny temperatures here. What is it, about 85 degrees? Feels like 90. Feels like 90 in November. Uh, but uh, no rain in the forecast today. A little bit breezy out of the east, but we're in the bay water, so we're in good shape. Uh, Project 1080 is going to take us uh, uh, for a ride down to Key Largo now. We're going to catch up with the others, have some lunch, and uh, keep on heading towards Key West uh, as we join the Florida Powerboat Club members on 27 years of Key West. Woo and back up in the helicopter now as we circle around this Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Fireboat 1. And, of course, they are a big part of our safety management program today. And it has become a, quite a tradition now to fire the hoses for quite some time just near the start of the run. Usually we have a second boat down at the feather beds. So let's get back to our aerial coverage now. Of course, we are in Biscayne Bay heading south from Miami down towards Key Largo as we join these two big MTI cats. The one in the foreground uh, looks like a 48, but I can't see a number. Altogether, we have about 14 MTIs registered for the Wednesday run, and I went through the list and was not able to identify whose boat this is, but maybe some of you guys out there might know. I assume it's a registered boat with the group, uh, but we never can tell. Of course, the one on the other side, well, that's pretty clear who that is. That big black 52 is Team Black Diamond, and of course, a fixture on our Florida Powerboat Club events as Derek Walkup and his team have been supporting these events for, well, at least 10 years. And, and in, during that time has had a number of different MTI boats. 
We're going to let this 48 uh, take a little ride, uh, catching up with Derek and throwing a nice rooster tail. Of course, he's got Captain John Teague at the helm with him. And as soon as they spot the helicopter, they're going to fire these 1550s, and they are good as gone. And now catching up with James Branton from Louisiana, 388 skater. One of 11 that are running today just on this Wednesday group. And it uh, has become a bit of a trend now that a lot of the skater owners get together, do the Wednesday run. Not as crowded, lots more room to open it up, and uh, of course, easier at the checkpoints. And that's exactly what James is doing right now. He's got her opened up and running those good wind performance. I think that they are about 2,000 horsepower aside from what I understand. So this is one fast 38 skater. James is another one of those young club members who grew up around boating with mom uh, and dad, David and Leanne Branton. They're also running on today's run, but in a 48-foot MTI. And it seems like it's uh, the time for white boats with blue and black trim. <laughs> as we now catch up with Lane Christensen on his 48 MTI, and it's appropriately named Team Fastlane. And this is a very sad farewell. Uh, we saw a little bit of this boat earlier, but the late Michael Pierce with his widow, Nicole Pierce, Nikki we call her, on board, and they made this their last poker run together with the club. It was just a month after this poker run that we lost Michael and his father, in a terrible car accident in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I think that Michael, uh, knowing how much he loved high performance and he loved this boat, Pure Platinum, would love us all to hear the roar of those Goodwin engines as he bids farewell to his performance boating family. Well, running right alongside Mike is Bo and Tiffany Renfro from Georgia and their 36-foot skater team, Dirty Money, Mercury Racing 700 SCIs. You can't beat the roar of that horsepower, so let's just let it ride. And of course, it's another skater as these guys are all running together today. Yuka Murto, all the way from Switzerland, and he has taken over the ownership of Mike Chisuli's 388 skater. And look at this piece, looking as good as it did brand new. Yuka is a furniture manufacturer from Switzerland, but today he's a weekend warrior with the Florida Powerboat Club as he pushes the throttles forward and gets these 1350s just cranking. And let's welcome back Chris and Angela Bradley, all the way from Texas. Poker Run veterans here on this event, year after year. In a boat now that took about three years to build, this is a Skater 388 with Goodwin Competition Power. And if we were to continue with the segment on the most outrageous boat on the Poker Run, it would have to be this 59-foot Tirana owned by Derek Wacom. The brand new cigarette, which is now powered by, that's right, you guys can count, one, two, three, four, five, six, Mercury Racing 450Rs, but that's not how the boat was released earlier in the year. When it came on the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, it had 400Rs, but of course they were waiting for Mercury Racing to come out with that new motor, and that happened in Nashville, and this of course was one of the demo boats that made up a fleet of about 12 brand new manufacturers who participated in that Nashville Mercury Racing product reveal. And for those of you who do not know, this is the new Cigarette 59 Tirana, and it carries the appropriate team name, Six Carat, which stands for the Six Mercury Racing 450Rs. Well, we're going to see a lot of teams from a lot of different places, but an awful lot from New York. And one of them is Matt Borsina, who's a regular now with the Florida Powerwood Club, enjoying his 
right performance, 36 cap, powered by Mercury Racing 400 Rs. It was a big jump from him coming out of a 28 skater. He's loving the boat, and he does more poker runs than ever, thanks to Performance Boat Center, which made this one of their new and very exclusive models. They've sold several of these to Florida Powerwood Club members. And let's catch up with Scott Witt, or at least let's try to catch up. He's cruising a lot faster these days now that he changed boats to this 33-foot DCB cat powered by Mercury Racing 400Rs. He came out of a 38 Formula, which is still a pretty fast boat, but he's probably managing at least another 10 or 15 miles an hour cruise speed. I noticed a yellow sticker in his window. At least he stayed in the performance class, which is for boats that cruise between 70 and 100 miles per hour. And a special welcome to Dan Kleitz from the Outer Limits Factory, who are one of our feature sponsors for this Key West Poker Run 2019. And he is running this big SL52, a brand new boat just got finished, Mercury Racing 1550s. Guys, it doesn't get much better than this. This is the flagship of the Outer Limits fleet, at least in the V-bottom category. And we all know that these boats are built for speed. This one is capable of cruising close to 150 miles per hour. And we're going to move to wrap things up very soon as we close in for this final money shot of this episode number two. Don Doty on the bottom there in the red 42-foot skater. Chip Miller on top in the 40-foot skater. Of course, both of these boats are owned by Don Doty, but he likes to bring all his toys when he comes on these poker runs. And no better guy than Chip Miller than to turn over the keys and say, Chip, if you get the boat ready, bring it on down and uh, you can run it with us and we'll have a great time. That's exactly what they did as they really close off this segment with style uh, running side by side, putting on a great show in Biscayne Bay here, running south from Miami down towards Key Largo. So guys out there watching us, remember to bookmark this episode. We are midway through the Wednesday run on the Key West 2019, and we are going to have plenty more episodes coming right to you here on YouTube. Let's say goodbye to the Don and Chip show as these skaters head south and we sign off for this episode. Remember to watch us here on YouTube, and I'm going to ask all of you, if you want to keep up with these episodes, be sure to click the subscribe button and then go over to the right and click notification bell. That way you'll get updates every time a new episode is released. You can follow the club here on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club, and you can get all of the event updates and information about membership at our website, which is flpowerboat.com. We're also on Instagram and Twitter, so follow us whatever way your preferred social media takes you. And we're thinking about all of you guys out there during these tough times, during this coronavirus uh, pandemic, but we're getting through it. We're staying in the studio. We're going to keep on producing content, and we hope you guys just stay safe out there. Follow local, state, and federal guidelines, and we'll get through this together. And if you do have a chance to go boating, remember to be safe out there, respect your fellow boater, and try to wear those life jackets, guys. This is Stu Jones, president of the Florida Powerboat Club. I invite your comments. You can email me or make your comments right here on this YouTube channel. Bye for now, guys. These YouTube episodes are brought to you by Mercury Racing Wide Open and by OffLeaseOnly.com, the nation's used car destination. In addition to our 2020 series sponsors pictured here, we'd like to recognize all of these Key West 2019 feature sponsors as seen here on our official event masthead. This is the artwork for our official souvenir t-shirts, posters, and banners. These sponsoring partners play a vital role and it's through their support that Florida Powerboat Club can produce this signature Key West Poker Run event.